Are you looking for a small, relatively inexpensive video doorbell? How about one brought to you by the same people who brought you other cheap, reliable cameras for your home? If so, you're in the right place. Hello, I'm Wanderer001, and this is my review of the Wise Video Doorbell. Yes, the same people who bring you other types of surveillance now have finally brought you a video doorbell. And of all the newer products that they have been unveiling, I'm going to say this is the one that I was the most excited for, as I was really looking to change my previous video doorbell, which was the Skybell HD trim here, um, and we'll talk about why a little later. So what we're looking at right here is the actual doorbell itself with camera. And as I stated before, it is ridiculously small, coming in at only 1.5 inches wide with a height of 3.25 and a depth of just over half an inch. And for me, that was something that I really needed. I have a very small physical space that I can put my pre-existing doorbell, and that's primarily why I went with this, because it fit. Uh, well, there were some changes that I made to my door, and that's why I was looking for something that had a relatively small form factor like this. Now there's a lot of other things that we can cover about this, the CPU, the image sensor memory, all that fun, happy stuff, but rather than weigh this video down, I will have all of that in the description area below. One of the things that you need to think about with a video doorbell is, well, is it weatherproof? Well, in the case of the Wise video doorbell, it is actually IP65, and later on I'll actually show you lots of rain footage because I've been getting a deluge lately, and this has been thoroughly weather tested, as well as the temperature range for the actual use of this. Wise states it's anywhere between negative four and 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Personally, I have been able to test it down to about 36 degrees Fahrenheit and up to about 92 is the highest that I've had it as of yet, and it still functions perfectly fine. Now, unlike some other types of video doorbells, the WISE uses a slightly different camera angle. Rather than a large fisheye, you get a vertical 120 degree field of view. So your horizontal field of view is only 80 degrees as compared to other video doorbells that might give you a more fisheye round look. This doesn't distort the video as much, but you get a much narrower field of view. Also, you have to worry about frames per second. So frames per second during the daytime video at even the HD settings, you're looking at 20 frames per second. And in night view, you are looking at 15 frames per second. You do actually get digital zoom with this, which again, I will show you later on in the apps portion of this video, but you do get eight times digital zoom. So not optical, only digital. And it's not terrible. Quite frankly, you are still able to discern what you're looking at, even with the digital zoom. So I've talked about general specifications of the WISE video doorbell. How about we move into installation setup and we'll start it off with what you get in the box aside from the video doorbell. You might notice that this one still has the lens cap on it. That is not because I have not actually tested this. This is actually a second doorbell that I just haven't put up and I installed my main doorbell already and have been testing for several months. So let's actually check out how the setup process was for that. In the box, before we get to installation, aside from the doorbell itself, you also get the digital chime, and it's just hiding there. You get a quick start guide, and then here, this is actually going to be your peripherals. So we open this up, and you have the wedge that the doorbell can sit on if you want to have that particular angle. And you'll see during installation, I did end up using this, and we'll talk about that later. You also receive nicely wrapped up all the stuff that you need to actually install. So you've got some wall anchors, you've got your set of wire extenders if you need them, you've got your wire caps, and then you get three of each screw. So you've got these long screws for mounting the camera plate to the wall, and then you've got these smaller ones to mount the wedge to the plate. Speaking of, you may not have noticed, but the wedge and the plate can separate. So if you just want to mount this to your frame thusly, without the wedge, you can. There is one portion that is missing, which you see during the installation, which is talking about a way to tilt this forward. I don't know why that's not 
included since they did give you the wedge, but it's another peripheral that you may have to buy if you're not happy with the angle you got. So that's what was in the box for the Wise Cam. Let's actually move to installation and setup. Step one is going to be to kill your power. In my case, the people who were here before me didn't exactly wire this place well. So the only way to actually turn the doorbell off outside is to come to our main breaker. And I know it's dark in here, but you know what? It's a breaker box, it's not meant to be lit. So we're just going to kill our main power. We will come over to our WISE app, select our plus sign and select add a device. And we'll say camera. And this does count as a camera. So there we have WISE doorbell and click here to skip installation tutorial, or we can actually go through it since this is the first time we're gonna go through everything. We're gonna hit next. We need a Phillips head screwdriver and then it's indicating our information for our chime box. I have a screwdriver, we're gonna go. This is everything that is included, which was over there. And we will hit next again, required extra stuff. So again, Phillips screwdriver we need, everything else was provided, next. And we already turned off the power since I watched a bunch of videos too, so I already knew that. Next, we're going to open the chime box and then figure out if we have a two wire setup or a three wire setup. So we're just gonna come in, take this off our chime box, which is pretty dusty. And this is partially why I cut the power, but just to be safe, just to make sure that there's no power going to it, we're good, okay. So we have a two wire setup because we only have a front door, but if we had a back doorbell, it would be a three wire setup. It is recommended that you come in and for future installations, take a picture of what you got. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to remove our two wires and attach them via the included cap and wire to bypass the chime box because Wise is not going to use this. So we'll come back in a moment. The bypass wire and caps are not terrible to actually install. You don't really need any extra tools except for the caps here. The wiring that you probably have in your chime box are the thicker uh, cableage. However, the bypass wire are those feathery ones. So you actually just need the cap, twist them together. You don't actually have to twist the cableage together before tapping them together. So. Once you get that wiring in, you'll just kind of tuck that in neatly somehow and then move on to the next step. All right, so we kind of skipped some steps here, but we had a two wire system and it shows disconnect everything, which we already did. So I'm gonna say next. We did it, yay, put the chime backs back on and then prepare for installation, next. So what we have to do now is disconnect the existing doorbell. So in our case, the existing doorbell is actually my Skybell that I was testing out a couple years ago. So for me, removal of this is going to be slightly longer than if you have a generic doorbell. Because for me, I have an extra screw and then the plate underneath. So we'll come back when that's off. All right, so I got my Skybell off. I've got the mounting plate pretty much removed. And then I just have to finish unwrapping our cableage, after which we'll go to the next step, which will be to get our WISE mounting plate here. Hopefully the plate that I will be using will be similar in size. I do hope that I can use the existing holes. However, I feel that it's a little shorter, so I'm gonna have to at least drill one new hole. All right, doorbell removed, we go next. So what we're gonna do is we are going to say flat against this. So we want parallel. So we're selecting the wall plate, or if we did the wedge, so wall plate is this, wedge is that. So it kind of rocks back and forth showing you. We're gonna try the wall plate. If we need to do the wedge, we can update to the wedge. We're gonna say no vertical wedge because they're just kind of showing. We're gonna see how this does with no vertical wedge. Next. All right, so we're gonna get the wall plate and screw our wall plate in. The wall plate has a very faint up sign right there. So just so you know where you're mounting it correctly. There was a change of plans because of the spacing I had between my wall and where I was putting this thing in. I had to use the wedge, which means just putting the wedge in first and then putting the plate in. Now it says we have to attach the wiring via the connectors. We're gonna say next just to see what it says. 
So we're gonna say connect it using the extenders. We have these here, so we're not really gonna have to use the extenders because with the wedge, we also get extra room to tuck it up back in there. So we're gonna do that next. So once again, Wise decided to make a liar out of me. If you don't have long enough cableage here, you will need to use the extenders, which I ended up having to do, but thankfully I'm using the wedge, so I'll be able to tuck things up inside. We're gonna select next, and it says to turn on our doorbell power so we can make sure that that's actually working. So that's what we're going to do next. So we turn the power back on. You can see there it's flashing orange and saying ready to connect. We're gonna hit next. Once you hear your doorbell saying ready to connect, that actually pretty much is the end of the installation process. You can take and mount it up on your plate here, which just pretty much slides into place, whether you're using the angled plate or the flat plate. And it will continue to say ready to connect until you're ready to connect. So that ends the installation portion, and then it just moves into the actual setup process. We are now at this point for the setup process. We click next. And if we hear the thing saying ready to connect, we can go ahead or we can select the reset button in the back of the device itself. We're gonna say we heard ready to connect and it's gonna ask us to log into a specific network and then give us a QR code. So we're gonna say QR code and try and scan it. And because I waited so long, I'm probably gonna have to reset this. So, all right, because I waited so long, it stopped saying ready to connect. So I have it saying ready co to connect. I have the QR code ready. QR code it just said QR, QR code scan, please wait. I select I heard that and then we say waiting until it connects to my network, which I plugged in that information ahead of time. So we'll see what happens. We'll give it a minute to connect since this is sitting on my IoT network. Setup completed. So it just said setup completed. I got a notification right there. It says doorbell is connected to Alex A. Next, we give it a name. So we're just gonna say front doorbell. We're gonna cheat and just say that and select next. The thing we need to do after this, well, first it's asking do you want us to share it, we're gonna say no. So it says status check, please confirm that your doorbell has a solid blue light uh, for normal status, flashing blue and purple, motion detected. So it detected motion, that's what it's doing right now, so it's detecting me. So we're gonna say next. Uh, we can then attach it to the wall plate again. I suggest you do it ahead of time because I tried doing it without and it was just a pain. We're gonna select next, we have successfully done it. Next, we're gonna add the chime. So for the chime, we're gonna go inside because we don't actually need to be outside for that portion. All right, ignore the horrible mess at the bottom of my stairs, but here we have our wise chime and our next step in the installation process is adding that. So we're going to select add a chime. So we're going to pair chime, we're gonna hit next. So we're gonna plug this in to the wall right here and then give that a moment so it's flashing or it flashed orange and then blue. And then we're gonna wait and see. If it stays a steady blue, we may have to push the button on top here in order for it to go into a pairing mode, but it's gonna give us a countdown timer here on the application. Now, I may not uh, actually make it wait and I will force it to go into a pairing mode. And there we go, phone is back on. It's in a pairing mode. And hopefully that means that it will connect shortly. All right, we're starting again. We're gonna tell it to reset. And there we go. It's in the reset pairing mode. And that super loud noise was it actually pairing to your doorbell chime. So we can select finish. And then that's the exterior of my home. And the chime itself is now connected to that doorbell. You can have more than one chime per doorbell, which is handy in case you need to have them in multiple locations. So this is the one good thing about bypassing the chime box and having these, but I still kinda wish that they gave you the option uh, to use the chime box if you wanted to. But I, I see why they do this. You can have more than one of these. It's nice. You can have different sound effects. So there you saw, if I didn't have a new door frame, I probably could have gotten this, had this installed and set up much faster. One of the extras that I did not have with my Skybell was the included electronic digital chime. This is something 
extra that will have to be attached to your doorbell as you saw during the setup portion. However, I wanted to run some tests on it. Mainly, one, how much power does it actually use? And I'm happy to report that it uses almost negligible amounts of power because I didn't pick up anything on my particular tool here. And that's, that's great for me. The one problem that I've had with it is this blue light at the top. There's no way to turn that off. And that means that this is, again, depending on where you have it, going to be a bright light that you cannot turn off. I wish they would allow you to do that. I am happy that it comes with several different options for actual like sound effects. You have, they call them tunes. So you have access to 19 tunes, five modern, four classic doorbell, three animal sounds, six sounds for automation and one intruder alarm. But obviously just naming them off isn't going to give you an idea of what you can expect. So here's a quick sampling of the sounds. Space chime. Wind chime. Curiosity. Surprise. Careful. Definitely not recommend that siren. Or there you heard what you can expect from your chime. And that's one piece of the two piece hardware that you get with the doorbell. The thing is, the hardware is only a small portion of what you can do with this. And that's because the hardware is only one facet of what you need to interface with. Meaning the application is where you're going to have access to a lot of the interesting features and things that this can actually do. So let's actually use this as a segue to take a look at the application for the Wise Video Doorbell. This will be the app slash user interface for your Wise Video Doorbell. As we can see, I have my video doorbell up here at the top. It gives you a little preview of the last time it took a snapshot outside. And all you have to do to access it is to click on your front doorbell, or that's what I named it. When we first access the doorbell, I want you to pay attention that the image itself comes in actually a little blurry first and then kind of sharpens up. It's one of these small things that I've noticed about the video doorbell that I'm me about, but let's access our doorbell here. Once it connects, and then sharpens. Hopefully that was kind of visible down here with the bushes, not my finger in the way. We're gonna start down here because this is the kind of day-to-day -day functionality of what this can do. This here is a zoom in, so it will just digitally zoom in on your camera. And you can see that that gets really sharp because here we've got a sewer grate that needs repair, a bunch of cones in front of it. You'll notice that if I try to pinch to zoom out because I use this, it will not allow me to, so I have to click on that again to zoom back out. We can pinch to zoom to zoom in, but you'll notice that unless I do this, it doesn't take up the full screen. So there are some odd, we'll call them, design aspects of this. And this is a live feed in the background, so if you do see movement like that, that car going by, kind of give you an idea of what that looks like. Moving along on the bottom here, we have mute and unmute. So this will allow me to hear what's going on outside. And if I turn this up, that's another thing with this that I don't particularly care for as you see people walking by. If I take my lapel mic and put it here, you kind of hear these weird clicking sounds. We're just gonna turn that down. And supposedly in a firmware update, Wise address that, but in my case, I still get that weird sound. Moving along to the right, this is our microphone mute on and off. So if I wanted to talk to people in real time, this is how I would do it. I would tap that. Notice you don't have to push and hold that anymore and that the audio outside turned on. So if I toggle that, both of them turn on and off. Our three dots over here allow us to access extra things that we can do with our video doorbell. May that be taking a quick snapshot of what's seen on the screen, and then it'll save to a gallery. I can 
record what's going on outside at a given moment while I'm watching it. So this is one of the good things of this is you don't need to have the Cam Plus subscription if you just want to see something right away, record it to your phone, and then it saves to your phone, and then it saves to a gallery that you can access on your phone through the Wise app. So there's a couple ways that you can get to it, and then we can stop that, and I'm going to say save, because that's going to save it to the device itself in that gallery, which we'll talk about in a moment. Over here we have our toggle for night mode on and off. In this case, I have it on auto, meaning that it will automatically switch from daylight mode to night mode based on the level of ambient light that it detects. And I will say, uh, this is very similar to the Wisecam version 3 with the starlight sensor, so it doesn't tick over to the night vision until it actually is kind of dark out. Once it's there though, it will stay there. Moving down here, we have our quick responses. These are kind of cool in that you can just come to quick responses and click. Can I help you with something? Hey, I'll be at the door shortly. Hello. Please leave the package by the door. We're gonna close that. In that, I want to show you, if I close this one second, keep in mind, quick response. Somebody rings your doorbell, you open your Wise app, you come over here to your three dots, you come down to quick responses, and then you select your quick response for that person at the door. Based on where this is in the menu system, I don't think it's really a quick response, but I get the uh, methodology behind it. If they moved it somewhere else, that might actually be a little better. Coming down, we have album. So here we can see, here are some videos that I took. This is an event video, and if I select this, this is actually a package that is being delivered to my house. You could kind of see, there we go. Person puts the package down. This is the event that we just recorded while we were talking, so you can see that got saved to our gallery. Coming in here, if I pause that momentarily, you can share this video out, you can turn on and off the sound, or you can delete the video right from within the app. If we come over to photos, there is the photo that I took while we were talking. Similarly, we can share or delete this item. Or if I come up here to edit, I can simply select on something and then we get options at the bottom to share or delete. So if we come to our video albums and I select edit, I can select both of these, share them or delete them in one fell swoop. So we're going to close that and concentrating back here on the bottom. This is this is this is weird in comparison to the wise cams that I've used. This this bar at the bottom is very different than any of the other aspects that I've had with wise in in forms of timelines. Right now we are at live. You can tell that because this number over here is ticking. If we scroll this, we can get events. So in this case this is a motion event which is me just going out and taking something out of, my, out of my mailbox. Scrolling right along here, we have person detected. So keep in mind, if you don't have the Cam Plus, you're not going to see these things that say person, you're just gonna see the things that say motion and everything is going to be motion. We can pause that for a moment because here we can either zoom in just like we could on the main page, toggle on and off our sound, we can play pause, we can download this clip directly from this timeline here, and then if we come over to our options, we can either share or delete. And we're gonna cancel that and I'm gonna pop back to live. So again, we're at a live feed, and, and that's kind of the controls down here. They're not terrible, but they're also not great in the same fashion. It's a little odd. If we come up to the upper right-hand corner, saw something fly by, we have HD. So what this will do is allow us to change our image quality to HD standard 480 or cancel. You did also notice if I tap anywhere on the screen, the controls go away. And there you go, that's a live feed of a car going by. So if we have this zoomed in and we don't want those controls there anymore, you've got a feed. Now remember, because this is zoomed in, you'll have to wiggle your uh, image around a little bit because this is only a digital zoom, it is not a optical zoom. Now it might be a little hard to see there hiding in the clouds, there is a little cog symbol. If we select that, that actually that actually brings us into the settings of our Wise Video Doorbell. First we have our name by default. Uh, it's just front doorbell or back doorbell. You can give that a special name if you wanted to. I just went with front door because that's where it's going. Next we have detection settings. If we come to detection settings, it is the sensitivity of your Wise camera. Notice I have it at 50% based on where I live and where I have it pointed. They do have detection zones, which is really nice, so that here you can see they've gone with the grid that they've been introducing into other Wise camera products. So you can select specific patches that you want to actually have monitored. And you can clear everything or you can undo it and you can save it. I'm gonna leave it as is event recording. Here we have options such as scheduling. 
I have it set for all day. If I didn't have it set for all day, we can specify specific start and end times for those motion detection events to be recorded. So if there's a specific time that you know people are gonna be around your house and you don't want it trigger, 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 you can turn that off during those uh, specified times. So if you know your guy comes to lawn, mow your lawn, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, from this time to this time, you can tell it don't do it during those times. Notifications. This one, I've trusted both. I've used Cam Plus, I've not used Cam Plus. If you do not have Cam Plus, you will only have an option down here for motion events. If you have Cam Plus, you have the option of WISE AI events and all other motion. Now, the WISE AI events are those person detection, package detection, car detection, pet detection, all those extra things that you get with the Cam Plus subscription. However, I want to be able to tell these apart. I want to be able to say, notify me when, a person, dog, or package. I don't care about cars, because as you saw, I'm on a main street, so I have cars going by quite frequently. I wish they would give a little more granular control there, but again, it's not terrible. I'll show you where this comes into play uh, with the labeling of things in another area. And then all other motion events, just as any motion that it detects, it will send you a notification if you have it turned on. Advanced settings, well, here we go. We've got our night vision mode, auto on or off, white LED. So this is underneath your camera lens, there's a white LED that when it detects motion or a person, that turns on, adds a little extra light, make it a little easier to see, but it also has the WISE logo on it. So if you wanted to be a little more stealthy, you could turn that off. Down here, you have show wise logo, timestamp, and record sound. These are all things that you saw on the bottom of the live video feed that we had. And then time sync, you would just click on that and it would sync your time. Accessories. So with your doorbell, you also get a digital chime box. This is the only way to access your digital chime box. So for whatever reason, if your wise doorbell goes offline, you cannot make changes to your chime. Wise, I'm looking at you, make this a separate accessory that I can access if my doorbell ever goes offline. But if we select this, we can name it. Again, by default, it's uh, Wise Chime. We're gonna leave it there. Tunes, you have lots of different things to choose. There's also volume controls, which is really nice, but I will say they do give you a nice selection. So if you want, have a dog barking when somebody rings your doorbell, because outside, it will sound like a regular doorbell. Inside, you can have a separate sound. So you can have a dog barking. When they push the doorbell, they hear the chime, then they hear the dog barking. Now, schedule, here we go. Schedule, if you wanted to, you can set specific days and times. In this case, I'm just going to say all day. It's going to ring the chime box all day. If I wanted to, I could select start and end times. So if I know at 10 o'clock at night, I don't want to be disturbed, I can set this for 10 p.m. I do wish like the sky bell, that there was a way to momentarily pause this should somebody be napping and you want to bypass the actual digital chime box. Again, wise, looking at you. And then we have our device info and delete. We're gonna come back because this is also how you can add an extra chime if you want to. Note right there, we have a plus sign. We click on that and then it would begin the pairing process. We're going to say no, no, not now and come back because that was our accessories. Our rules are very similar to anything that we could set up with a wise cam or a wise motion sense. You can say if motion is detected and it's a person, turn on the, my wise bulbs in my living room. So this is where you can set all of that up. Sharing, you can share this particular device with anybody you want. They do need to have a wise account in order for you to do that. Device info, self-explanatory, not showing you. And then why support? Again, the fact that they build in the support into the app, I do greatly appreciate. And then you have your restart device. For whatever reason, if you need to, there is a button on the back of your doorbell, but that is a hard reset and makes it so that you actually have to log in and do the pairing process all over again. This will simply restart your device should it freeze up. I haven't had it free, I had it freeze once and I did not use the restart, I used the hard reset. And coming back, again, like I said, this is the overall area for the app for the doorbell. But we are going to select back and come down to our events and filter for our doorbell and show results. Because here, for each of these, you can see person vehicle, person vehicle package. So this is the Cam Plus being smart and letting you know what it has detected. My problem with this is I want to be able to not only tell it, yes, I know person vehicle package, tell me only when 
it's a package or a person. Don't tell me if it's a vehicle. So all it's really doing is using its AI smarts to identify what is in the image itself. One of the benefits, if we come back to a recording, and I'm gonna pause this momentarily, you will notice right over here that there is a one. That means that you can speed up this particular video up to four times. I will say that Wise was very nice in that if you do not have a Cam Plus subscription for the Wise Video Doorbell, they let you have access to speed up the video. So I do appreciate them doing that. And then down here at the bottom, if we simply click on live stream, that brings us back to our live video feed. And that is a look at the Wise Video Doorbell application slash user interface because everything you're pretty much gonna do with this video doorbell is taking place through the Wise app. So as you saw, there are some things that I like and dislike about the way that Wise approached the application portion for the video doorbell as opposed to some of their other offerings. That's not to say that it's terrible. And you saw while I was doing the review, you did have some motion in the background to give you an idea of what type of video you can get from this. But what's better is actually raw video footage that you can look at to make your own assumptions as to how good it is for your use case. I will state that what you're going to see next is actually a combination of both Cam Plus video and not Cam Plus, meaning it was motion triggered or manually done by me. In order for you to get the most out of it, I feel that you really need a Cam Plus subscription because if you just have this set for motion alerts, you're not going to pay attention to them after a while because my motion alerts when I was testing it without the Cam Plus subscription were constantly going off. One of the things that I think Wise missed the boat on with the video doorbell is they have under that little rubberized cover there, a micro USB port. But what they needed was a micro SD card slot like they have in their cameras. I cannot tell you how many times I got either a person alert or a motion trigger and the thing that got recorded did not show me what led up to what happened and I wish I could go back and have scrubbed through the footage. I think it probably would have raised the price of this but I really think that that's an option that they should have added because everybody who's had a Wise product in the past has gotten used to having the ability to at least use a micro SD card for localized storage. I think part of that is due to the fact that this, because of the way that it mounts, it doesn't have a screw and maybe they were worried about it walking off. But then again, you can put a micro SD card in there, Wisecam Outdoor, and it can walk away too. But let us use that as a segue for seeing what the actual raw footage from this looks like.
One of the interesting things though that you can do with your Wise Video Doorbell, because it is part of the Wise suite that they're building up, is trigger particular actions based on things that happen with the video doorbell. So this would be good for somebody who may be hard of hearing and when the doorbell is pressed, a wise light would turn on like this. My one regret with that particular triggering that I set up is that I'm using the new wise color bulbs, but I did not have an option to actually change the color bulb. I could only change the temperature and brightness. If you'd like me to show you a video on how I set up that trigger, let me know in the description area below. One aspect with the actual overall design of the Wise Video Doorbell that I'm not too keen on and have had several package delivery people do this is this here. Even though this glows, it doesn't seem natural for people to press. When I had this one here, my Skybell, you had a big old button that people pressed. This is not terribly bright in comparison to the Skybell, but I kept my LED off because I didn't want people knowing that this was a video doorbell, so to speak. I've had several package delivery people push the actual camera lens instead of this down here. Could this be made brighter? It would be nice, but I, I, I think the odd shape of it is probably what's throwing them off. I do appreciate though that the white wise LED does not come on when you're actively looking through the doorbell as opposed to what I had with this. So people don't necessarily know that I'm actively viewing a live feed. With all of that data, what are my overall thoughts of the wise video doorbell? Do you get what you pay for? Which might be different than what I paid for it because wise seems to be moving to this different payment schema. Depending on if you have Cam Plus, you can get things cheaper. Or if you bought it early, you could have gotten it cheaper. Uh, the global chip shortage that is currently happening has raised the price. This is now $50. Depending on your view of $50, if that's still considered a cheap doorbell, which even compared to this one, still is cheap without a monthly subscription because you don't have to have Cam Plus to actually use this. You do get the 14 day rolling cloud storage with this, but you'll only get that for 12 second clips. If you want longer, you'll have to have the Cam Plus. So it's not necessary to have. It is strongly recommended for the video doorbell in particular to have that because of the lack of the micro SD card. I really wish they would have added that. And I feel it was actually a shortcoming on Wise's part, maybe to cut down the cost. I have been happy with Wise products in the past. The Wise video doorbell is no different. I did not have crazy expectations for this to be like a, door, a video doorbell from Amazon or Google. And it stays with the ethos of Wise. Reliable, fairly cheap products. Hopefully you have found some portion of this review helpful in making your own informed buying decision. With that being said, I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee, link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.